This is a demonstration of the Energy Time Curve, or ETC module, which is available for in-app purchase within the Audio Tools app. We are doing this demonstration in the simulator running on the Mac so that we can do a better video. Uh, everything should work just the same on the app itself. The first thing you should know about Energy Time Curve is that there's two modes, external trigger and internal trigger. So I'm going to tap on the wrench icon here to get to the settings page. And this is where you change internal to external. And in external mode, you need a threshold level, which we're going to set here. And then here you can set the units you'd like to see displayed, which you can change any time. And the lock graph scale option is used if you don't want to be doing any changes to the graph accidentally. So we're going to, it's in run mode now because it's showing pause, which would, now it's in pause and now it's running. And since we're in external mode, it's just monitoring my speech patterns and showing you what's happening on the screen. I'm going to stop talking for a minute and then I'm going to clap my hands in the room to create an actual impulse where we can look at the decay. Okay, so we've got a pretty nice decay here in the room. We can use a cursor we have here to drag across and read the dB value and, in this case, distance in feet from any point on the screen. If I go back to the setup and I go back to units of milliseconds, we can now see the time in milliseconds and the dB level of the decay. To get an idea of the RT60 time in this room, we use a double finger mo motion here, which is like a pinch motion, and you see we then get two cursors up and then a green line between them. The green line is the decay line that's picking between the two spots on the curve. And over here we can see it's decaying from 82.5 dB to 55.3, which corresponds to an RT60 of 445 milliseconds, which is about right for the room that I'm in. We're currently in A-weighted mode, but we can tap this button here and change to unweighted, C, or any of the octave band weightings. Only one weighting can be in effect at a time. The most typical value and the recommended value to start with is probably A weighted because the low frequencies will tend to distort the results. With this button, we can change the width of the window on the screen. So if we're in a very small area or we're just interested in early reflections, we could change this, say, to 25 milliseconds. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, let's push play and see what this looks like. So in this one we can see there's some very quick reflections going on and uh, nothing very coherent there. We can go to a much longer time, say uh, 1.6 seconds, hit play. Now we can see the entire decay curve in the room. It took about, uh, if we use a cursor here, uh, about uh, 430, 460 milliseconds for the complete decay. And we did get actually almost 100 dB down to 40. So that makes sense. It's about 60 dB in that time. Again, if we use our pinch mode, we can get a cursor that will read out our exact display and the RT60 time. Now in the simulator, we don't have as much control since there's only one point to touch. On the actual iPhone or iPod Touch, you can move these cursors about anywhere you like. Once we get a curve we like, we can tap this icon here and then use one of our empty slots here and record it. We might want to put a description saying what's going on. Then we push store and it timestamps it and says, oh, we're in external mode. If I have another curve here that I've recorded earlier and I recall it, we can then bring up that curve that was saved earlier. Now the other mode available is internal trigger. So we turn the external trigger off and now we're in internal trigger mode. And now watch what happens when I push play. Okay, in this mode, the app is generating its own pulse, which you're able to hear. And then it graphs the decay of that pulse over time. So in this one, we can see actual timed reflections. So let's go back to a much smaller time window and start the program. 
And here we can see the actual reflections in the room that were occurring after the actual pulse happened. So you can actually use this function to check the distance to a speaker or to check various speakers for delay time and see how they vary. So we hope you've enjoyed our demonstration of the energy time curve or ETC.